The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbiter? And he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them this parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, What shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, This is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, Now, as for you, you have so many good things stored up for so many years. Rest, eat, drink, and be merry. <clears throat> but God said to him, You fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things that you have prepared, to whom shall they belong? Thus will it be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. And so today we hear from Christ's own words the parable of the rich fool a man who had more than he could have ever used to spend in an entire lifetime, more than he could have ever used in an entire lifetime. And yet, at the end of his life, when he, had, when he was called before the judgment seat of God, he was called a fool by the Lord because he did not take care for what was his ultimate end. He did not take care for what was his ultimate goal as a human being. This particular reality that many of us face uh, in our own uh, life's experience in wondering what will be our legacy, wondering what we will leave behind, how people will remember us, this particular reality of our human experience is very uh, vividly explained and uh, experienced in the story of Alfred Noble. Alfred Noble was a man who lived in the 1800s and it was after uh, it was in his name that the Nobel Peace Prize is actually named. Alfred Noble, at the end of his life, he was a man who was incredibly rich, had hundreds and hundreds of resources at his disposal, had great and powerful relationships with the powerful of the world. But even with all of his success, even with all of his riches, at the very end of his life, he cared for what he would leave behind. He cared for how, even in his death, he would uh, affect the world and those in it. And so, near the end of his life, he penned together the fund that would ultimately become the Nobel Peace Prize. Alfred Nobel left behind for those who would make great advancements and discoveries in science and literature and in peace for the world as a whole, he would leave for them a prize that could be won for those who placed their effort and their talent in advancing the human cause, in advancing the sciences and knowledge of humanity for the good of humanity. Now, this is how Alfred Noble ultimately ended in his life. But there was something in his life that caused for him a great change in his heart there was something that happened in his life that caused for him a great change in his conscience. This particular event was the fact that one day 
he was reading a French newspaper in the mid to late 1800s, and he read within the newspaper, he read his own obituary. Now, this happened because there was a mistake in uh, the journalist who was writing out the story about how Alfred Noble had died. It was not Alfred himself who had passed on, but rather it had been his brother Ludwig. But there was a mistake in the article, there was a mistake in the obituary itself. And so Alfred Noble read of how the people throughout the world thought that he had passed on. He read his own obituary, and what he read in that obituary was finally what caused him to change his entire life. Alfred Noble read in his obituary, Yesterday, a man who has brought no great, no great goodness to the world has died a man who has brought great destruction and suffering to humanity has passed on. The reason that Alfred Noble had to read these words in his own obituary was the fact that Alfred Noble is known as the inventor of dynamite. Alfred's father was a man who invested and put time and energy in the creation of weapons and armaments and explosives. Alfred then followed in his father's footsteps and became, again, the inventor of dynamite, one of the most powerful and uh, one of the most effective explosives that humanity had ever seen up to that point. Alfred in this creation had garnered millions and millions of dollars to his name. In our own monetary system, the equivalent would probably be in the billions, if not even more. But Alfred, upon reading his own obituary, had to take into account how he had affected the world. He had to take into account how he had affected the lives of so many of his brothers and sisters. Upon recognizing the great seriousness and gravity of what he had created, of what he had done, it was in that moment, immediately afterwards, that he put into mind to place as a fund the Nobel Peace Prize, that only those who would bring about good, holy and helpful things in the world, in the areas of physics, chemistry, biology, literature, and peace, only in the goodness of humanity, would he therefore, even after his death, uh, support those who wanted to bring something good into the world. Now, for all of us, this is something good and important to consider, how will the world see our lives after we have passed on? How will people remember us? What will they remember about us? But for us as a Christian people, the most important question that we can place before ourselves is at the end of our earthly race, when it will come time for each and every one of us, to pass on from this life into life eternal, the ultimate question that we have to place before ourselves is, how will God remember me? How will God see my heart, my mind, and my soul? Today, in the parable, where we read about the rich fool, we know from the parable, that this was a man who had everything he could have ever wanted. It was so much so that the, the harvest that he reaped from his crops and from his bounty would have been enough for him to not have to work for years to come. He could have done whatever he wanted, gone wherever he wanted, 
gotten and acquired whatever he wanted. But in the end, the Lord called him a fool because he had placed earthly gain, because he had placed earthly possessions before the possession of heaven. My friends, in our American society, in our American culture, oftentimes we are, we are given the message that who we are is based on what we have. Who we are is based on our position in society, is based on the goods and benefits that we receive. That who we are is based on how much we can acquire. But, if you all will go through with me in a small thought experiment, we will see what truly is the core of who we are. We will see who we truly are when everything is said and done. Each and every one of us is an individual made in the image and likeness of God, made spiritually for eternity. Therefore, what is it that we truly are? Who is it that we truly are? If, for whatever reason, we were to lose our car, we are still who we are. If we lose our home, we are still who we are. If we lose our job, if we lose our family, if we lose our health, we still are who we are. The ultimate reality is that even our very bodies at the end of our lives, even that we will lose for a time. And yet, we will remain who we are. It is this most fundamental reality, the very core of our heart and mind and soul, this is the only thing that we truly have as our own. This is ultimately what God will judge when it is our time to stand before Him upon His judgment seat. So there are only two things in this entire universe that we can claim. Firstly, our very souls. And secondly, the love of God. Because God is an all-knowing, all-perfect, all-loving Father, he has set aside for us an inheritance for each and every one of us who are his beloved son or daughter. This ultimate inheritance of God is to spend eternity with him in love in the kingdom of heaven. This is our ultimate inheritance because ultimately it is the only thing that matters. Now, this is not to say that we should not care for ourselves. The Lord understands that we live in a physical world. We live in a world where we need to take care of material aspects of our life. We should take care to make sure we have enough food, that we have proper housing, that we have proper clothing to protect us from the elements. And if we are parents, then we have also the responsibility to make sure that our children have just as much in order to make sure that they are cared for properly in this life. But the crux of the reality is that even though these physical realities are of the utmost importance, they are not the most important. The only thing, again and again, that truly matters, the only question that we should place before ourselves is how will God find me 
at the end of my life? Will the Lord find before His judgment seat within my heart, will He find a heart that desired to love, that desired to sacrifice for those whom I love? Does the Lord find in my heart a heart of generosity, of compassion, of reconciliation, of humility? Or will I allow my heart to be filled up with so many things and so many earthly realities that there will no longer be any room for God? Will the Lord find within my heart a care for how much I can acquire for always having the newest and the best thing, even if I don't need it? Will the Lord find within my heart a heart full of pride, of greed, a heart full of desiring human acknowledgement, human attention? Or will the Lord find in my heart a heart that is open to being filled with God's eternal love? Will the Lord find a heart that is open to being filled with God's eternal mercy? My friends, for us as a people of God, for us as sons and daughters who have to run this earthly journey, who have to run this earthly race, that we would not fall into the temptation or fall into the fallacy of believing that the only race we have to run is this earthly one. That when it comes time for us, just as it did for the rich fool, that the Lord would not find us to be foolish. That we would place before us at every moment the reality that God is not only with us here in this world, but that God will at His perfect time, desire to be with us for all eternity in the life to come? Will we have a heart that is open to receiving Him? Will our heart be too full of the world and of pride and greed?